Good morning, everyone. Thank you, dear chairpersons, and uh, thank you, audience. I am an oculoplastic surgeon practicing in an academic eye institute in Hyderabad, India. And being an ophthalmologist who practices oculoplastic surgery, uh, I would like to bring forth a few periocular complications that may be of concern and you might want to know more about how to deal with them and basically try to understand why they happen. So complications in and around the eye when you do injectables, primarily Botox and fillers, can be multiple. And you need to know why they happen, what is the anatomy that describes their occurrence and possibly what should be your stand in terms of being your, keeping yourself medical legally safe as well as trying to find out what you can do about it. So I'm going to touch upon five topics. The first is bruising and bleeding around the eye. Second is ptosis and double vision which usually happens with Botox injections. A word about dry eye, ectropion of the lower eyelid and last but not the least blindness. So talking about bruising, there are certain things that you need to remember. So here you see a patient's photograph where you see a subcutaneous ecchymosis and you also see a subconjunctival hemorrhage. Many of my dermatology friends, they get quite alarmed when they see a subconjunctival hemorrhage occurring out of a deep filler injection. Now, if the bleeding occurs in front of the orbital septum, it's going to give you ecchymosis. If it's going to happen behind, then you're going to have a subconjunctival hemorrhage. They basically mean the same thing. There is some amount of bleeding around the eye, but a subconjunctival hemorrhage doesn't necessarily mean something more grave or vision threatening. So if you are able to measure or assess vision as well as the pupillary reaction, the size of the pupil, if it is same in both the eyes, you don't have to worry about. Now, nowadays, there are many apps on your smartphones which can measure vision so you don't have to be an ophthalmologist to assess that so just download one of those apps whenever you're doing a filler before and after the procedure make sure you've checked their near vision and proved it that their vision was fine now one of the things that you may want to know if you are affecting the eye function in any way is that if if there is a bleed behind the eye and which will definitely cause not only dilatation of the pupil, but the person would tell you that their vision is blurred. Another important thing is to just ask the patient to extend their neck and compare the positions of the two eyes. And if you have one of the eye that's more prominent than the other, then there's probably blood collecting behind the eye. Although this is not going to happen unless you are injecting fillers deep into the orbit or even behind the eye to treat in ophthalmos in a sight seeing eye. Talking about Botox and fillers is something which is very commonly asked to an ophthalmologist. Now, if you look at these two ladies, what do you see here? What's happening? What is abnormal? If you focus on the brow, you will see that the right brow is slightly higher, just a tad higher than the other. And that is a consequence of a mild ptosis on either side. If you look at where the upper eyelid is cutting the cornea, here it's just a millimeter below the superior edge of the cornea, but here it is two millimeters. Same on the other side. If you compare the light reflex of the camera, it's been covered more on the right side. So both these patients have mild ptosis on the right side induced by a periocular Botox injection. And anytime you have a mild ptosis, it's going to be compensated by a brow which is higher and that can in fact lead to more asymmetry. Look at this lady who has a mild ptosis on the left which is causing the brow to be higher and therefore there's a hollow created which is artifactual. Her mother who has an actual acquired aponeurotic ptosis has the same anatomy and her brow is much higher. So whenever you see ptosis post Botox you wonder what caused it. Now this is going to happen when you treat glabella most commonly and there is a reason for that. So if you strip off the orbicularis, here comes the septum which extends from your tarsus to the orbital rim. 
if you take off the septum that is where your levator muscle is most of its component that is in the eyelid is aponeurotic and the muscle is somewhere up here the junction between muscle and aponeurosis along the orbital rim so naturally the corrugator muscle which is deep and lying next to the levator if you are treating that you are very close to the levator already so no wonder that's going to cause ptosis if you give a deep injection there's a very nice paper which also looked at the second mechanism which could be tracking of the drug along the tributaries of the superior ophthalmic vein so there is one mechanism where you could probably avoid giving the injection near the levator by making sure that whenever you are blocking corrugator you probably place a thumb there to know where the orbital rim is and place the injections above that the second is through the tributaries which is something which you cannot help but making your dose concentrated could help talking about crow's feet and lacrimal gland we all treat uh, crow's feet with botox and we also need to know that the lacrimal gland is very close to that so if your injections are going to be in and around the lateral canthus especially the superior part the one above the horizontal midline you could block the gland in fact this is one of the treatments to uh, for the hypersecretion of the lacrimal gland and here is a paper which talks about effect of botox after lateral canthal right treatment so although in a healthy patient if you treat lateral canthal rightids you are not going to have dry eye but if a patient already has a history of dry eye and he or she is taking medications for it you might complicate things so what do you do in these patients you can either check for history of dry eye and if it is present might want to avoid any spot that is above the lateral canthus which is closer to the lacrimal gland same thing can also happen when you are reshaping the brow with botox because you try to block the orbicularis in the lateral two thirds or one third and that is again very close to the lacrimal gland Another commonly done procedure is uh, Botox for the lower eyelid for an excessive or a prominent orbicularis roll. Uh, many assume that this is going to lead to an ectropion, but it's not true. If you're going to lead, inject two to four units in the lower eyelid, that is not going to cause ectropion for, for the lower eyelid, especially in young patients. So you need not worry about it. Finally, coming to the topic of blindness, which is exclusively linked to particulate injectables that is either fillers or PRP or even fat for that matter and there is good amount of literature available on this topic and many of you may be knowing what is the mechanism so here is a is a vascular anatomy cross-section of the eye and normally what happens is whenever you are injecting fillers in and around the eye if it blocks the artery and goes anti-grade it's going to produce necrosis but if it goes retrograde, you can follow this particular point where through the external carotid uh, system, the particulate goes retrograde into the artery, goes back into the ophthalmic artery, and there it takes another course, and instead of coming back out, it goes into the central retinal artery. So this is a retrograde injection. So this is obviously going to happen if your needle tip is within the artery, and you are forcibly injecting it at a very rapid pace. And this may not just be restricted to fillers, but it has also been reported with PRP and even uh, fat injections. What do you do when in these situations? There is very little that you can do in the clinic. Uh, eyes which have uh, filler lo lodged into the central retinal artery would probably require a paracentesis within a few minutes by the time you contact your ophthalmologist or your retina specialist it might be too late already so just coming to uh, summarize for bruising assess vision and learn how to detect proptosis of the eye so that you're not you're sure that you're not collecting blood behind the eye Ptosis, uh, there is no medical topical therapy. The best way is to avoid it. But if it does happen, wait it out. Dry eye, best option is again to avoid Botox uh, near the lacrimal gland in patients who have history of dry eye. 
Ectropion of the lower eyelid is overrated and you should not worry about it. And regarding blindness, although there are re there is research going on about its appropriate treatment, at this moment best is to inform your patient and make them mentally prepared for it, no matter how rare that is. Thank you. Thank you.